Welcome to Flying Smoke. Today, yep, charcoal video. It's Christmas time. We're running really short of time. We just had a competition the other day uh, with wrapping presents and being, you know, secret Santa and all that stuff. <laughs> it's going to have to be what it is. Uh, we did a lot of cooking. We just, it takes the two of us and it takes one to film. Anybody that's got a YouTube channel will know. By the way, if you haven't already, subscribe and if you like what we're doing ring the bell you get notifications but just subscribing tells us it speaks volumes all right so today the charcoal video of choice is going to be something that has kind of a close near and dear to my heart it's right here blues hog all natural lump charcoal hardwood Blue Hog uh, is out of Missouri. Uh, they started off in Tennessee, a uh, guy by the name of Bill Arnold. Uh, and the reason they're near and dear to my heart, when I was first getting started in barbecue, oh my God, 15, almost 20 years ago, I made a phone call to a website to ask them some questions about something I'd seen on a barbecue channel. It was Blue's Hog, uh, it was their signature sauce. It was uh, a mixture of their original and Tennessee red, and they get what they call the championship blend, which by the way, it's done so well, you can get the championship blend, which actually has more in it than just the, the original, but they, again, I don't wanna to get too, you know, too. The reason it's near and dear, simple. I was at work, I walk inside the break room and my cell phone rings, because I had called the 1-800 number to ask a question, and it's Bill Arnold himself, the owner, Mr. Blue's Hog, calls me, little old me, at, well, not little old me, you know what I mean, and takes the time to answer my questions. This is a guy who owns a company. He's not some, you know, faceless corporate executive sitting in a, in a you know, suit and tie in a boardroom. He's out there. He's competing and still takes time to answer questions for you and I. And... I have yet to meet him in face, you know, face, person to person, but I, I really am looking forward to after COVID, of course. So this is a all natural product. It is hardwood lump. It is Missouri hardwood, and therefore it is mostly oak and with some maple and hickory in it. So we're gonna light it up and see how it does. Let's get going. All right, today, blue hog natural lump charcoal. And Let's get started. We're going to get it going. Uh, as always, we do two uh, lighter cubes in here. Put this over here. And two chimneys while we're just doing single. Let's see what it's like. Got a glassy thing. Kind of small. And a couple big pieces. I would say this is a smaller, these are smaller lumps. I, I, I do have a few big pieces. Oops. Two big ones. Let's make that work. Yeah, I would say this is a sort of a matte finish, fairly clean, but small. A few good sized pieces, but the rest of them pretty small. Okay. I'm gonna start my uh, timer clock off here. And the time now is 3.20, no, sorry, 3.35. There we go. Just a few seconds. Sit back down there, dude. There we go. All right. All right, and handles are off the back. My hands are nice and dirty. Let me move this off camera. It's safe. my glasses on so I'm not going to be able to read it but here it is created by a legendary pitmaster Bill Arnold 
Blues Hog began in the rolling hills of Tennessee with pork shoulders. Blues Hog Premium is made from 100% natural hardwood. Highest quality ingredients. I'm gonna let it roll. Let's see what we come with. Now if it's like every other lump charcoal, uh, within 20 minutes it'll be it'll be ashed over, hot, and ready to cook on. So let's let it go and see how she does. You stay there. All right, that's 25 minutes. And it is ashed over at the top, just like I thought. So, get these gloves on. I have lost my skin on my fingers too many times. Out. It is red hot, man. Ooh, orange hot. Excuse me. Now take a second and move your chunks around a little bit with this as a barrier so that you can get nice even heat. All right. Real grates are going on. Oh, I'm sorry. Reset this, reset it to zero, off and running. All right, let's get this baby sprayed up. Now, always be careful. I mean, I can't say this enough. I have fire extinguishers right off <laughs> camera set, whatever you want to call it, my yard. Three minutes and 20 seconds in. It's already at 526 degrees. And you can tell the smoke is flying. <laughs> it's starting to come off here. When you get close to 600 degrees, I like to keep my grates really well lubed, and this is a cheat for me that I'm going to give to you steak cookers out there. I spray my grill down heavily, way more heavily than I need to. The reason is, I don't have to sit and pay attention to it when I'm getting the grates and everything up to temperature. When the smoke is rolling off this thing, 
I know it's close to 600 degrees. My target temperature is eh, usually around 650. Now, since I've got this new grill, another way to tell is you can tell if you have the red one. Bright red, dark red. Doesn't tell you the temperature, but it does tell you that it is getting hot. The powder coat down there will definitely change as you go forward. Coming up on five minutes. And it's this is performing very well. 593. Well, there's a spot that's six to thirteen. So within five minutes, this stuff is ready to cook on. That's fast. Normally I give the briquettes about ten minutes to get up to temperature. But you gotta remember, lump burns a lot hotter. So let's see how we do here. There's five minutes and 11 seconds right there. Yeah, 619, 612. It's hot. It's getting hot and it's going fast. And as you can see, that smoke is rolling off there. Once it hits 600 degrees, that smoke just rolls off there. All right, let's go once around the grill. I'm gonna start in the center and go around. Here we go, center of the grill, 609. 597, 604, 611, oops, 606, 599, get in the center, 626. I hope that gets comes out. All right, we're at seven minutes and 12 seconds. It's still climbing. Not as fierce, but it is climbing. The teeth are starting to roll off this girl. Yeah, I'm getting spots of 650. There was one that's 680. 650. 637. This is 650 degrees. It's ready to cook on. That's 7 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm going to close it up. Bill, you got good charcoal, buddy. All right, so I'm going to leave it wide open, and it's a seven minutes and 49 seconds, and it is now. Let me come up here. Hopefully that comes out okay. Oops. About 10 after four. Okay. And again, since I just popped the lid down, you can see. The top of that grill is bright red. The bottom of the grill is brick red. It's powder coat, so the heat's gonna change it a little bit. Close this baby up. Okay. All four of the holes in the top, well, four top and four bottom are wide open, so it's just gonna roll. And we're gonna come back in about an hour, see how well it does its holding temperature. All the smoke you're seeing right now is oil burning off the grates and it does a couple things it helps me shoot videos for you guys and cleans my grates so anyway it is now coming up on nine minutes we'll be back at 10 after five and we'll see what we got all right it is now 70 minutes it's an hour in let's see what we got there we go Center of the grill. 653. I'm going to bring that up. 653. Around the horn. 650. Now oh, it's cooled off a little bit now. 625. 588. 500, a little cold spot. 455. 604. 553, and again the center. 622. So it's held it for an hour. As you can tell, well, my LED lights don't work, and I've just got backup camera lights, so it's going to look like a club up in here. So, it's now 
15 after five. Okay, I'm gonna let it burn. What we should come back to is just little white wisps. Nothing left, no sticks, no logs, no lumps, no nothing. It should be gone. We shall see. But it has held temperature. I mean, 620 degrees in the center of the grill. I can still cook on this for competition an hour later. And to my knowledge, I don't even know if B&B did that. This thing's held its temperature for an hour. That's really good for lump charcoal. So we'll come back in a few hours. We'll see what we got. I'll take a picture of it in there. See in a little bit. It's a result and it's a good result. I was surprised. I actually, it took a little long. It smoked a little heavy at the beginning. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm not a lumberologist. I just know it smoked a little more in the beginning. Uh, it cleaned up very, very nicely towards uh, when we were getting ready to drop a clean, clean burn. It took a little longer to get rolling. And I didn't say anything at the time, but I'm in my head, I'm talking to myself. And I'm like, if it takes a little longer before it's good and ready to drop, in theory, it's going to burn a little longer. Because, you know, if it gets ready in six, seven minutes, it's burning hot and fast. And I mean really hot and fast. And therefore, the cook time is going to be hot and fast. Well, Blue Hog, 25 minutes and it was ready to drop. And an hour later, it's still holding 620 plus degrees in the center of the grill. Um, 500 plus around the edges. For lump charcoal, that's really good. And as you can see, that's the result of the burn. Not bad, huh? It's a result. It's a good result. Uh, online, this is listed as about $26 a bag. Uh, we got it for about 20 at a local store uh, here in Memphis. And uh, I'll put a link to that up there. Luis. Uh, go check them out. They got a uh, great selection of meat products and charcoal, grilling, things like that. Go online, check them out, give them a call, see what their hours are. With COVID, you know, everything's different. So, what do we got coming up? Well, we got some cooking competitions for steak. And we have the World Championship uh, that's coming up in March. And in between now and then, we're going to do some more videos. My wife has told me, some of you all keep asking about what are the things that we use in steak cook-offs. And I'd like to get a little series going, but I've got to get my wife here to help me film. And during the holidays, I'm working on the weekends. She's working during the week, so it'll have to be when she can help me shoot. So if I don't talk to you all, I wanted to take a moment from myself and my wife, Michelle, to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, this new normal, it's not going to last much longer. We're going to get through this. We beat things like this before, we'll beat them again. Together. Y'all take care. We'll see ya.